Hey everyone, my name is Carson, and I am so glad that you are watching on our YouTube page. Each week, we will have a segment where our messages from the week prior will come up, and we hope you enjoy every message that you see. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this message. Uh, my name is Kennedy, and I'm so glad that all of you guys are here today, and it's such a pleasure to come and speak with you guys. Um, today, I'm going to be finishing Come Home, and you're probably like, wait a minute, this is the third week of doing a lesson. Are we supposed to have something else this week? November is a special month. And let me tell you why. <laughs> Next week we are here. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs>
to me students all the time. So you start to get like, why did this just happen? Because I put in all this work only for it to go to waste. And you get jealous and confused. The next set of feelings that he felt was prideful and betrayed. So when we feel prideful, we tend to feel the deepest sense of betrayal because as we think of ourselves as higher and higher, that is when we are subject to the deepest feelings of betrayal because we think we deserve more. You think, Cayman actually taught about humility a few weeks ago. And so let's say this is like your line of humility. And as you can't see yourself as less than what you are, and you can't see yourself as more than what you are, but as you become more and more prideful, you start to climb this ladder. And as you climb this ladder, you start to think, I deserve these things because I'm so good, right? I'm so good, I deserve the ring, I deserve the coat, and I deserve that fattened calf for sure. And so the older brother is kind of like a Pharisee in this way, because Pharisees were the people who saw themselves above the law. People saw themselves above other people, which is not good. Um, and you're probably like, well, he didn't see himself over a particular group of people, and that's right. But he did see himself as above his older brother. He thought his sins were less of that of his brother, so he deserved the fattened calf, and he deserved all these great things, but nothing was happening to him. And so this is where I kind of thought a little bit. I was like, he saw himself as better than his brother. But are we really better than each other? And in James 2.10, it says, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. So here's the older brother. This is probably what he thinks of himself. Here is his younger brother. So he's like kind of thinking of himself. He's like, yeah, I'm a little bit better because I haven't done like this, this, and that. And maybe in this passage, it doesn't say like, man, the older brother was a murderer. He was a convict. Like, he doesn't say any of that. But we know that there's only been one perfect person to walk across the earth, and that is Jesus. Good. <laughs> so we know that he's had to sin at some point. And here's his brother's sin. This is kind of what he thinks. But in God's eyes, the sin looks like this, or the sin looks like this. Because in this section, it says, whoever fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. So they are equal in the eyes of God. They are both equal. All sin is equal in the eyes of the Lord. But this was something that he just didn't understand. He just didn't quite comprehend it. He's like, I've never disobeyed you. I've never strayed away from you. And I've never forsaken you. And it says, when this son of yours comes back, you celebrate him, and I have nothing. And so he felt very prideful, but also very betrayed. Jesus to die on the cross for our sins 
I've ever felt before? Who's felt these feelings before? Who's felt betrayed? Who's felt prideful before? I, I've been there. I've been to all of them. Kennedy, I just want to give honor and give thanksgiving because Thanksgiving's coming up. But also, thank you for sharing that with us because honor is due and honor is due. And, and so we thank you as a group for sharing that with us. And we thank you for uh, doing that. But can we just pray um, just over our leadership team? I, I, I have this on my heart. Uh, but just over our leadership team because we believe it. This isn't just a cute Bible study. It's really not. Uh, this is life. This is the life that every single one of us live and every single one of us want to live. Because no matter where you're at, we all ultimately desire to draw near to God. Uh, whether you don't know God or whether you say that you hate God. God's the only person that can give you the life that Kennedy just preached about. Uh, so can we just bow our heads and close our eyes? And we're going to go into a worship song after this. And I want it to be a time of response. To be able to say, Jesus, all these things that I just heard, I, I might sometimes think it's a Bible story. I might sometimes think, ah, oh, that didn't really happen. But it did. Jesus did sit in the midst. And Jesus was talking to people, and he told this parable. It really happened. So Jesus, we come before you, and we thank you. We thank you for Kennedy's message. We thank you that she was able to hear your words so that you could speak it to us. And God, as we're about to go into just one more melody, one more quick song, we've decided, oh, come. Oh, come to the altar. We've decided yes and amen. We don't want to rest in school anymore. Not anything bad with grades, not anything against the school system. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is that we're done resting in stress. We're done resting in anxiety. Because whether we admit it or not, most of us are there. And God, we're, we're done resting in pride. We're done resting in betrayal. We're done resting in all the things that the prodigal son rested in. And Jesus, we come home today. And we want to express it through worship. In Jesus' name, amen.